طيب لو حد موجود مساء الخير بس يطمني ان الصوت والصورة تمام If anybody there just uh, just check with me that you can see me and hear me as supposed to be Good evening Is there anybody out there? Khadija, how are you? Hope everything is okay. You can listen to me and see me and everything looks okay or not. Okay, Khadija. Thank you. Got you, got you. It's 
So, 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 so you think we shall start? Shall we start? Shall we start? Okay. I think we can start. Okay. Um, uh, thank you for attending. Um, this session uh, i think we will talk today about uh, how to create um, viral content and um, let us start by um, asking a question as usual i mean as usual i i i i start my stuff with a question i'm a believer in the power of questions okay so, um, what is the most popular video on YouTube? Um, we will work like this. We, I, I will go with my presentation stuff. Uh, there is a problem technical actually that I can share my presentation with you, but I actually I will upload it and leave it by tomorrow morning to um, um, a Google um, a Google account, and then you can just pick up the material as much as you want and um, keep it, of course. So, um, is there any reply about um, what is the most popular video over YouTube? A hint, a name, anything? Mm. This is a good thing that you should put your... So the question was, just a reminder, what is the most popular video on YouTube? So, then so far there is um, no answer, so I have to answer it myself. It's actually, um, it's a song, and it's a... Um, It's a Spanish song, it's called uh, Despacito. Despacito is, uh, have been seen more than 6.4 billion times. So we have 6.4 billion views of Despacito. Um, till 2015, uh, the biggest viewer was much less than this actually it triplicated in um, less than five years i mean the first song that surpassed the two billion barrier was um, a song by a korean song called ps um y and, he, and, and then the the, the the song was uh, uh, the song name was um 
The song name was uh, Gangnam Style, Oppa Gangnam Style. Yeah, I remember this. And it was a bang at that point of time that um, we have a song that surpasses 2 billion views. And especially in that case, it, 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 it made me interesting because actually me as an Ayman Salahma a specialist in, in media innovation, and one of the things that I need to understand is at some point of time, why some of the content goes really viral, really uh, like uh, popular and everybody is interested actually to check out um, this content and see it and um, share it and so on and so forth. And this become actually um, a focal point since 2013, 2000, uh, 2014, 2015 for me as a media innovation expert is to start to design campaigns and um, content that it is attractive. But let me tell you something that it's not all the content uh, can be miraculously attractive as something like Despacito or Oppa Gangnam Style. Uh, especially in our case as, um, as, a, as a professional media people or a professional journalist that have the challenge all the time that uh, most of the time that uh, our content uh, is not um, attractive. I mean, you are journalist, what content you create? I mean like news. Uh, I'd rather prefer to, to go on with my presentation and then you can ask me questions at the end of it. So. Um, Whoever was here to, to, to attend the presentation can enjoy it or not. And then the questions can take uh, place after that. Okay, so um, this, w this ignited actually me that um, it can be done. It can be done that we can have massive uh, number of uh, viewers that can um, enjoy the content, see it, and uh, see what they can. Uh, or how they will enjoy it. One of the things is, uh, I think it's a key factor uh, in that is, uh, before going to the, um, the, the further details of the thing, let me tell you that I'm, I'm, I'm not a genius or somebody who is uh, not normal, um, just to think of me. No, 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 at all. I'm a normal person. I'm a good reader. I actually, I work in media and I work in marketing and I have a good expertise as an information technology. That's why I work in media innovation field. And the whole presentation or, or the whole session today will be based upon some books I read in the past. And I think these books actually um, set the idea or set the theater for me to talk about viral content. So the first book is called The Purple Cow. It's by somebody called Seth Godin. May I ask, what are the colors of the cow? If you know any, please tell me, write it down in the comments, it will be great. What is the color of the cows you know? The question is, what is the color is, or, or the normal colors of cows? Okay, I will reply to this also. Actually, the cows doesn't have a lot of colors. It either the black, the black and white ones, which is actually a breed coming from Netherlands, or the breeds we have in the Middle East, which is actually more like a brownish, goldish thing, which is actually fine. This is normal. But what if I seen a purple cow walking in the street or in a farm, like going to a farm and all of a sudden I find a purple cow or a red cow? This is something that you usually don't see every day and it will amaze you. I mean, some of us actually, of course, uh, all of us as a journalist, 
will start to photo the cow, video the cow, and start to send the streams or the photos to their newspapers or uh, websites or TV stations. Um, so everybody on f of the team that say that they could, this is a wonder actually, this is something that it's not normal and it's not like we don't see it such thing every day. It's a, it's, 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 it's a different, it's a very different thing. And this is actually what uh, our friend, uh, Mr. Sad Godden, uh, was talking about in his book, The Purple Cow, that in order to produce a thing, you should think over to make it a totally different experience or to do something totally different so you will stick to the people's minds. In fact, before internet, we usually receive something around uh, 200 to, to 300, 300 something messages every day. But what resides or stays in our mind, or as, they mar as, as we marketers say it, what sticks in mm -hmm. our mind, our minds, is actually only three or four messages as maximum. With internet, we receive around, we, we work around with something like uh, 1,000, 1,500 messages per day and actually the same thing happened because our memories are just didn't expand still the capacity will stay three to four messages only you take you take them to, 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 to bed when you sleep not more than that and this is becoming challenging so a lot of people or a lot of media people thought that internet w will be easy no 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 internet is much 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 harder and we we, we need to, to to make sure that you know that quite well it's not easy it's not easy at all and i think your expertise shows that the other book actually i i put the whole thing on it is actually a, a pink i put the, the whole session about it it's called unleashing the idea virus it's a free book written by somebody called seth godden so uh, these are the resources that I used uh, to do this and actually I do a lot of consultancy work uh, on um, social media and uh, content creation and media convergence so on and so forth uh, using such basic things question now why we need the virus why we need something that reach have a very high reach and uh, a lot of people know about in a very short time why we need the virus you have any clue why i mean like do you have an idea why we need viruses in our work We need viruses because actually we need speed. Uh, we need um, the radio tick took 38 years to reach from user zero to user 50 million. The TV took 14 years. The internet took four years to reach 50 million users and Facebook which we are using right now took only two years but actually right now there are even faster things like games are going to reach uh, are reaching 50 million users in much less time something like call of duty mobile reached mid 100 million users in less than a year it reached its fifth first 50 million in less than six months actually five months plus and actually there are more games that reach at that like Pokemon Go took less time so we are in the daily race of we need a s speed we need the, the need for speed 
need for speed to our news or our stories to reach our customers, to reach our prospect clients. All of us like, uh, like viruses or hear about viruses. Do you hate viruses? Do you like viruses? Like. Viruses have a very distinctive character. Very. It actually scans the environment about it and start to build its defenses based upon this environment. So, uh, if this environment is, uh, is a SADC, the, the, the defense system will be alkaline and vice versa. Viruses learn about the environment they work with and then they start to adapt to it and then they start to use this environment for their favor and then they start to invade our bodies. And this is actually what 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 is what uh, what is what we see in um, the um, in something like coronavirus, for example. So we must learn. We as a media people must learn from our uh, friends or enemies, which is viruses like Corona or COVID nineteen that we need to understand actually our environment quite well and we need to adapt to this environment and work with it to reach our goal this is actually how viruses work and i don't think that we do enough market research about our readers ask yourself this question who is my readers who are my viewers i myself i work on social media i produce my own media and i i um i do a lot of videos i do posts i do blogging i do podcasting so on and so forth the whole thing because i teach them in the university i train on them so i have to keep myself aware of, of the techniques and so and in the same time actually I, I need I love to practice it I love to practice it so what we work on is actually is um, we usually do that but do we know who is the viewer I mean it's I know it's quite hard when you work on TV station or radio station or even a newspaper it's very hard to know the reader and you do uh, you, you you need to do a market research but actually if you don't know the reader you don't know which kind of content is interesting to them it's not only content right now actually back in the days that we said that the content is the king but actually we have a royal family right now we are dealing with we are dealing with the content we are dealing in which way or what we call it the contest the context and then we need to know in which time our reviewer or our viewer will be ready to receive such thing and we need to know what is the impact of this content on the user of the content because if there is no impact I mean if it doesn't make him knowledgeable so he knows something more are we sure that what 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 would our content is doing that does it help him does it help him to, to to save some money or to gain some money I mean does it impact his daily life if all that is nothing actually our value of content is nothing and and, and I usually when I do a, a, a consultancy work with whoever customer I deal with I always ask this question what is the value of your content 
to your audience. If it's nothing, it's nothing. And there is no need for this content because it will fail. What is the impact of your content? And we need to know that quite well. 2013, 2014, uh, Facebook done a, an awesome study about a very basic question. Very, very basic question. Why people share? I mean, usually you as a journalist, you just write your articles, you do your videos, you do your production, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And then it's like a sitting duck. Nobody's watching it. Nobody's interacting with it. Maybe we don't ask enough questions. Maybe we don't, maybe the way we do the content, it doesn't encourage our audience to give us feedback. We never ask for feedback. We never ask for suggestions. We never ask for this. While if you see a YouTuber, if you go to YouTube and start to watch a YouTuber or start to, to, to deal with a blogger, the blogger emphasizes a lot about the interaction of the users with him in the content. So why people share? The first result they reach it, it strengthened the human bonds between each other. So for example, if I like Umm Kulthum, which is actually an Egyptian, a quite known Egyptian singer, and any of you like Umm um Kulthum, who will be interested or feel special if I started to talk about Umm Kulthum, how talented she was and and if I started even to know that there is a lot of Umm Kulthum fans, a lot among the audience, I would start to use Umm Kulthum preferences, references, which is actually odd, like um, using this song or a, 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 a part of the poetry itself. So on and so forth. So it, it strengthened the bonds between humans that we share. The second thing that actually each thing we share it actually reflects our character. If you like Umm Kulthum like me, most probably if you find an Umm Kulthum song on uh, uh, YouTube or any of the social media or even um, a, 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 pre a reference to Umm Kulthum thing, actually you will just share it among the people because you like it. This is part of your personality. We call it the collective identity or the social media collective identity. And then each of our audience and us actually seek status. And this is a very important question. Does our content give our audience a special status that others don't? I mean, one of the things that I usually, do, yeah, w w when I work in consultancy um, with media outlets, I tell them that we need to make our audience superheroes. Does our content make our audience superheroes? This is a question that actually it is becoming more vital because if you don't make them superheroes, other content will make them superheroes and they have your audience. By the way, our capital as media people is our audience. One of the things that I teach actually is e-marketing and marketing. And one of the things that we call it the uh, consumer life cycle. And I can, can simply name it also the reviewer life cycle or the breeder life cycle. It is not all the readers come and go as they are. Actually, it is a cycle. It is uh, first it starts with awareness that the reader start to know who you are, what do you are writing, right? And then it start to move into the second step, which is actually we call it consideration. So he knows that Ayman is provider, uh, a content provider. What will make him consider me as a content provider? What will make him consider checking my content? And here, in our case, as media professionals, it is the, the title. 
And that's why I created the title that it's viral content. It is attractive. So we need to attract an uh, attractive title. And then he will start to try. The trial in our media work is actually only 13 seconds. They give us the chance of 13 seconds he check our article or watch our first 13 seconds of the video. And if this 13, th 13 seconds wasn't good enough that it will attract him to continue watching, he will leave. And this is, we call it in the web, the bounce rate. The bounce rate is the visitor who visit your site or page or news or whatever content you have and leave before the 13 seconds mark. If he left before the 13 seconds mark, we cannot consider this a visitor because he didn't continue. And it, this trick is actually used a lot, a lot, a lot in media outlets. And it's very debatable that uh, the, the, the less than 13 seconds guy is a client is a reader or a viewer or somebody I can consider. Okay. Um, what happened after consideration is what we call it the, uh, after the consideration and the trial, he, then he starts to either he like what we are doing, so he'll buy. And the buying here he does not pay us money because most of us as, as media service providers, we doesn't ser uh, provide services with money unless we are a cable or um, a subscriber based thing, which is actually we are most of us. We are not, but he pay us his time. And this time, his time is actually the currency we sell to the advertisers in order to make media business. Okay. So he buys, not all of the time that he buys, he uses. I might, for example, watch a cooking show and I like it. So I will contact my mom or my wife or my sister telling there is a good show, a good cooking show or a movie or a piece of news. So uh, I'm not all, not all the purchasers or, or not only the people who are the consumers. And then after that, if he like me, if I provide him, if he or she like me, I mean, he will become loyal. I mean, I used to work for Fatafeed for three years, Fatafeed, the, the, the food channel. And one of the things that made me really like wonder that 73% of our users were in, in, the, in, the, in the time category of 7 to 3 p.m. Uh, which is Mecca time or Cairo time or uh, I mean from Morocco to like Iraq it's like two three hours differences so just such differences which is actually the prime time of the talk show 73 percent of our users were male they just get tired from the talk shows and the blah 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 happening and they just switch to Fatafeed so we as a, uh, we working in Fatafeed done a very nice trick that we put a very something that absorb you are coming from something like news and make you like doubt it and thinking a lot and something will give you a cooking show that it's fluffy i call it fluffy so it's it's a nice cooking show that make you like rest breathe as if you were racing and all of a sudden you are at rest it's 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 a lot it, it brought a lot of people we become like the the, the painkiller of the, the people moist And a lot of people actually, when people start to talk about your brand, it's much better than you talk about your brand. Because in, in marketing, there is a very well-known saying that it says, if we said it, it's a lie, even if it's a true. And if they said it, it's a true, even if it's a lie. Which means that people, what people think about us is more important than what we think about ourselves as media so the word of mouth advertising it actually carried some people like fat feet and it carries actually somebody like now like fox news so people know that fox news news is not that good or bbc 
or Al Jazeera or whoever. This is what we call it the brand, and we can talk about brands and media brands as much as you want, but not in this session. So how to transform our uh, audience that who don't know us from the very beginning to uh, a loyal brand maker is something that it takes time. It took us time to know that Mercedes is a good car. It took us time to know that Fox News is not a good news source. It took us time to, to know that this restaurant is good or bad. It's branding. How to create a virus? First, start to uh, work on what we call it the first hive or the cell, the first cell, the, the first infected. The first infected cell have to be something around from 11 to 30. Think of them as the disciples of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Prophet uh, or, or Jesus or Moses, the people around him, his disciples. You have to know them well. And then you have to decide who of them is a sneezer, who of them have network, uh, social network good enough that he can pass information. You have to decide the sneezer. And there is what we call it sneezing words, like for example, in, in the Middle East here when I say top secret, or um, see it before they, th they, they just delete it, like uh, what we call it in Arabic, shahid ma qabla al hasr. It's th such a word that they will remove this content because it's very dangerous and it's a scandal and so on and so forth. It's becoming, it's becoming very popular in the Middle East to, uh, to, to see, to, 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 to watch. I mean, like, okay, top secret. Uh, this is like a three bad thing. Yeah. Leaks. And we have WikiLeaks, of, of course, as an example for that. Just saying it's a leak, especially in, in, in societies that it doesn't uh, are not so much transparent with the information. It doesn't have that. So uh, if I say this is a leak of uh, blah, 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 this will make a lot of people see it. But if you are, the second thing is that if you have a really a real leak and you use leaks so much, people will not believe that you, this is a leak or a unique news story. And most probably they will just it's a lie they will not believe you so we need to know where to use this um, sentences where uh, effectively and then we need to make our content a little bit smoother a little bit easier to understand by the audience and that's why actually there is a whole branch of data journalism and data journalism of on its own it's quite awesome but actually without an easy to understand and uh, easy to comprehend uh, infograph most probably it have no value so we need to make um, as as uh, as the nutritioners always said always say easy to digest news yes then you have to make sure that uh, you don't spread the thing very fast because if you spread it very fast, it will die also very fast. If you want it to take its time, you have to be slow with it because actually if it comes easy, it goes easy. And if it took its time, it will take its time also to leave the market. Know your target and always remember if they have nothing, it bother them they will find something to bother them. So it, it'd rather be you or others. Um, it's in media, we are talking about perceptions. We never asked our audience how they think of our content, how much of it they understand. Maybe this was valid question in the field of uh, non-social media or, or non-digital media because actually interaction was very hard. I mean, if you are doing a newspaper article 
or if you are doing a TV program or a radio program, it's very hard to take the feedback of the users. But with the digital platforms, they have to be, there are too much feedback tools that you can know your, what, what is the feedback you want to do. And uh, then you can measure it and do it. So feedback, feedback, and feedback. Try to know it as much as you know. Try to know how the users see you. When we use an, um, an, an, like an, a graphical thing, we usually put what we call it visual keys. Visual keys is something that we try to get from the minds of our users how they see things and we put the things that they are easy to identify into that and then we can add whatever extra extra information we want to pass to them so you need to use what we call it the visual cues in order to make people notice because if you see a photo that you don't know nothing about most probably you will not be interested to see but if you so see a frig see a photo and all of a sudden there is a subject in this photo or there is something that you know and you are interested in most probably you will start to rediscover the photo again how we can create a virus first uh, this uh, first cell uh, you have to have an idea of a content for them and the more the easier the idea the more different the idea is the most probably it will travel more so try to, I mean, like, um, a lot of people talked about, for example, coronavirus, but a few of people, and how it's ugly and kills people, so on and so forth. But actually, one of the things that people might be interested in, and a lot of, th of people doesn't, like, what? Like, tell me a positive thing about corona. We have done that. I mean, like we have done a lot of, uh, I, I saw a lot of videos done first by amateur, then by professionals. What, give me a positive thing that Corona gave you. And then people who start and think about the Corona and the time of the quarantine in a different way. This makes people remember you. Coronavirus was positive. And like, what? Yeah. And this is a way. Uh, of pe making people remember what you are doing and then start to um, identify who gonna carry your message how he will carry it or how he or she carry it or the media will carry it then start to make the hive talk about it i mean right now it's not about the reach even in social media it's not about the reach it's about the engagement or what we call them in marketing, the convergence rates. It's, I mean, you know, it's, it's quite easy actually to have a page with like million users, million fans in your fan page, or million followers. But how many of these million interact to the content you provide? If this is low, this means that you are, your users are not engaged in you. And actually, we have percentages in this. And actually, we do consultancies in this. It's, it's a business. It's a huge business in the marketing level and uh, right now on the content level. I've traveled a lot in the Middle East, um, North Africa, even to Africa, like Nigeria, Cameroon, and so on and so forth, to do that for uh, newspapers, to do that for TV stations, to do that for websites, to do that even for social media players. And then monitor, set what we call it the KPI, key, perform key performance indicators, or, toi, or, or what is your target. Nobody can talk to all the Egyptians. We are a 100 million. Do you think that there is a single news story that interests the 100 million people in Egypt? I don't think so. I mean, they are sliced into segments, and you have to know which segments are interested in what you are doing. The most things that people share over uh, internet are, number one, design. If you don't have a good design on the digital media, you have a problem. People will just, the first, I mean, uh, you know, of course, uh, what we call it, the love from the first sight. 
there is no love in first sight if the design was good. You will just lose the first sight opportunity. Second thing will be, the more you know your audience, the more you can help your audience, the more your audience will watch you. So, as I always say, the more I know, the more I grow. The more I know about my audience, the more I grow among them. For example, one of the things that I do on my uh, Facebook Live and uh, YouTube channel and uh, my Instagram IGTV is asking my audience to give me subjects. I mean, what do you, I, I, I usually cover technology, gaming, so on and so forth. And ask people, okay, if you want me to review a certain handset like a telephone or a watch or a laptop or a technology or an operating system or a program, just tell me. I'm good at that. Um, and actually, it led to some uh, expansion of my audience. It's not a huge expansion, but it led to an expansion. That some of my audience asked me, Ayman, please, would you mind if you actually review some like uh, headphones? Can you tell us how can I select a hard disk? They ask it for it. I provide it with them, so they start to share it. And this is a start of a success. I am not a... Um, a huge social media influencers and this is not my job I'm not interested in to be but I'm trying to use it as a tool to learn more about what I'm working with okay so the third thing that actually uh, help you to understand what is uh, to be seen a lot is actually understand the desires what will make them share I mean fear Happiness, fun. I mean, w one of the questions that I asked that why people share this pasito, and it's quite obvious actually because there is an um, the ladies dancing is awesome, the atmosphere of the song itself is calming, so it's it's awesome, it's, it's a nice thing. I mean, it relaxes you down. But I, I had a problem with the PS uh, PSY Opa Gangnam style. Why people share it? Really. Don't tell me the lyrics because the guy actually POSY was, was, was singing in Korean. And I don't think that a lot of people outside Korea know Korean. Not two billion. So it's not the, it's not the words, it's not the lyrics that spread them out. But because actually one of the things that we found out about Opa Gangnam style that most of the time our perception about uh, Far Eastern that they are people very serious about business, they are very nervous, they don't smile a lot, they don't laugh a lot. And if they do something like that, silly, you will enjoy it. So that's why maybe people uh, shared a lot something like Opa Gangnam style. Make it easier for them to share. I mean, imagine that if there is no sharing button on Facebook, how we would share? We will copy the link in the address bar, and then we go to open another window in the browser, and then paste this, and then we start to write our review. I mean, how many times you can do that? Tell you, four times a day. When Facebook added the share button back in 2009, this added to the number of shares by 1800%, which is actually 18 times more shares, which is jumped from 4 into 60 per day and added to the users of Facebook. So make it easier for uh, uh, your people to share or your audience to share involve the audience the more the your audience are involved in a content the more they are interested in and the more they will spread it because they feel that they own the content if i'm working for example with Wanis, and Wanis put my name in his story i will share Wanis el falaki story because i become a part of Wanis content so make the content them theirs one of the things that it shared a lot on the internet is kids kids stuff yes because kids are innocent humor is much 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 shareable 
almost 30, I mean, sorry, what 79% of the content shared on Facebook is humor, jokes. And we at the Middle East, we have a lot to joke about. One who thinks that it's, a, it's much shared is actually the things with extreme skills, like uh, a very hard goal in football match and you score, or a very skillful uh, fighter, or a very skillful uh, somebody in, in something, skill. One of the things is that most shared on the internet is sex and porn and uh, such related stuff. It's, it is shareable, either we like it or not. One of the things that is share, uh, shareable is the, the things that uh, have a lot of destruction and explosions. And so on. One of the things that is most shareable over internet is magic, that the magical things. And um, we have a saying, always say that uh, if it's not shareable, if, it's, it, if it doesn't spread, it's that. Uh, so try to think when you do your content, to think of it as how we can make it more spreadable. A lot of people know more about it than a lot of people uh, use it and benefit from it. I think this was my last uh, thing and I'm waiting for your uh, questions, if you want. I'm waiting for questions. And if you want me to reply in Arabic, I can reply in Arabic. I don't mind replying in Arabic because this is a question. This is not the session because we agreed at MENA that we will do this session in English. But the question is a totally different thing. We can, I can reply in Arabic or English. I'm Egyptian, so yeah. I'll give you two minutes. Uh, if anybody have questions, I'm ready to reply. Just put them into the comments and I will work on it. Mm -hmm. I'll put the material uh, in English and if you want I can also have the Arabic edition uh, on my Google Drive and uh, you, if you pass by the web uh, by, by the page tomorrow you'll find the link available for the content in PDF you can download it and enjoy it as much as you want Okay, seems that there is no questions. So thank you a lot for your time. And I wish I was, uh, I said something useful. If you need to contact me after that, uh, I think I can leave you. This uh, is my personal profile for Facebook. You are welcome to contact me. And let's continue talking about media and how we can make it better for our uh, societies and our uh, countries. Thank you a lot for your time. See you next time. Bye-bye.